everybody, welcome to How I Make an Object Show. It's called How I Make an Object Show because you can do it however you want, but if you want a good place to start, then this is it. My name is Sophie, and welcome to the very first episode of this new series that I'm starting. So, the reason I wanted to start this series and what it is, is... I noticed that there are a lot of tutorials out there on how to start an object show, but a lot of them leave in gaps and don't quite explain everything. So in this series, we're not just going to be doing animation, we're going to be doing writing, concepting, audio, voice acting, we're going to teach all of those things, slowly but surely. And... I find that I'm in a very fortunate place to be able to do this because I have a lot of experience with all of these aspects, and it's a good place to take everything I've learned from hands-on experience, from proper education, from working with colleagues, tips and tricks of the trade that we've all shared with each other, uh, something that I can pass on to you lovely viewers at home. So... Without any further ado, today we are going to be familiarizing ourselves with the workplace. And the workplace, the workspace, sorry, is just everything that you're going to be seeing right here. From here to here, this entire rectangle that you use to animate. So what you're going to want to do is create a new file. And how you do that is by clicking the new file button. Or you go over here to the top tab, click on file, new... And you have different presets, right? So there's HD, standard, full HD, 4K. I would recommend with going HD. And if, if you know this kind of stuff, bear with me. It's going to start off kind of built for the very basics. But here you have the option to change your frame rate and your resolution. Now this is 720p, but don't worry. If you use this, you can still change your resolution when you render. You're not going to be stuck in 720p because it's a vector program, whereas most programs are bitmap based, which means they're made of pixels, where if you scroll in, they get blurry. Vectors, you can scroll in on them forever. So your resolution doesn't really matter, but you want to keep it a little bit low because it still affects your performance on your computer and can cause some lag. So your frame rate is basically how many drawings in a second there are. Most animators go for 24, some go for 12, I go for 18, but we're going to be using 24. I would very much recommend you not go over 24 under any circumstances. So you're going to want to click on Create, and here it is. This is the workspace. You may notice that mine is a lot different from yours. So you're going to click on Window at the top, and here are all the windows that you can have. You can see ones with a check mark are the ones that are already open. And these are going to come very in handy. But for now, you're just want to go to going to want to go to workspaces and see the different options. By default, you should be on essentials, but I would not recommend using essentials. A more advanced version is basic, which has more sort of stuff. And you can drag all the windows, of course. You can change the size, you can relocate them, you can move them like if we want to have Output here, over here, we can move it there. If we want to have properties down at the bottom here, we can do that. Another workspace that you can that a lot of people use is Classic. I personally use Animator, and that's what we're going to be using for the tutorial. You don't have to use it, but it may make it easier to follow along. So, let us go over the tools. There are two main brushes that we're going to go over. The Fluid Brush, which is the more modern, advanced one. It takes more on your GPU and your RAM, if, and if you don't know what that means, you're not computer literate. It just means it's going to cause some lag on your computer. I have a very good computer, so I, I can really use it all I want, but if you have a lower-end computer, keep that in mind. And there's the Classic Brush, which is the old one. You should not experience really any lag with this, but it does look a bit clunkier, so if you have a lower-end PC that can't handle the, the power of the fluid brush, you know, I would recommend using this. Or even if you just prefer the broken look, like I personally do. I don't know why I'm having fun drawing fire while I talk. Then feel free to use the classic brush. And over here on the properties panel, you can change the size, the minimum size, the smoothing, and all that stuff. Different tools have different properties you can change. Over here is use pressure, and this only really matters if you have a drawing tablet, but if, if it's off, 
no matter how hard you press your pen against the tablet, it won't change the size of the brush. If you have it on, which it should be by default, the lighter you press, the, the thinner it is, the harder you press, the thicker it is. And, you know, the, the eraser tool, pretty self-explanatory, it just erases stuff. There we go. So then we move on to the rectangle tool. It makes rectangles. Now you may notice it has two colors and it has two color properties. The fill, and the fill isn't anything new. We've seen that with the brush, but it also has the stroke, which you can also change the thickness of. But the stroke is one of two color properties and you can see them over here in the color picker. And you can change that by clicking pencil. You can click between the fill bucket or the pencil over here to switch between which color you want to change. And in the color picker, there's different kinds. You can change by HSB. I don't really know what these means. I, I usually just use H or RGB. But again, I just use H. You can do whatever you want, though. So let's check out the line tool. Now, the line tool is also pretty simple. It makes lines. But if we go back, there's actually something we missed about the rectangle tool. A little sneaky secret. If we hold down click on the rectangle tool, more options open up. And the reason we can tell we can do that is there's a little arrow there. I can't see if you see it, but it's there. And it makes it so that we can use other tools like the oval tool. Ooh. Or the polystar tool, which makes stars, but also polys. Pretty fancy, huh? Now, the pen tool is a bit harder to explain. It's kind of like the line tool, where you click on a point, you click on another point, that makes a line. You can make a bunch of them. You can make as many as you want. However, if you hold click, and then you drag a bit, you can make curved lines. I like making sound effects. I hope that's not annoying. If it is, leave a comment. I won't change it, but you can complain. Then there's the fill bucket tool. And the thing about the fill bucket tool is you can you can change the color. Pretty pretty simple. But there's a hidden setting again. If you hold down click and it creates the ink bottle tool. So let's say you have a shape that has no outline, right? You can click on the ink bottle tool to give it one. It's kind of niche, but you will be very glad that it is there. The eyedropper tool is very standard. You can use it to pick colors. The hand tool lets you move around the stage, but you can also do the same thing by clicking on your scroll wheel and dragging around. Magnifying glass zooms in, but you can also do that with control and scrolling in and out or with control plus and minus or the thing up here. There's a lot of ways to do this stuff. And there's a lot of other tools that you can use, but a lot of those won't be important. There's also three main tools that you can use to select. The select tool, which you can drag, move it around. But if you want to change the size or the rotation or skew something, you can use the free transform tool, which lets you do exactly that. The lasso tool is essentially the regular select tool, but you can, you know, you can make it so that it selects specific shapes that you can cut out. And that is going to be your main tools. But you have your tools and you use your workspace, you use your user canvas or your whatever you want to call it. But the problem is you cannot animate with just this alone. So how do you animate? Well, that is where this thing up here, the timeline comes in. Now the timeline is made out of three building blocks, frames, keyframes, and tweens. So, what are those? Okay, so frames are a period of time, and that period of time is one frame, and a frame is a portion of your frames per second. So if your frames per second is 24, then 24 frames is one second. Pretty basic, I know, but we have to go over the very basics. Now, how do you add a keyframe? Well, there are two ways. Hold down click on this button and click on frame. That's one way. Or you can use a keyboard shortcut and keyboard shortcuts are gonna be a lifesaver for you. F5 is how you add frames. If you wanna add multiple frames, then select drag on the timeline, however many frames you wanna add. Let's say we wanna add up to two seconds. 
then click F5, and we now have two seconds of animation. But you can see, we haven't told the computer how to animate. There's two seconds of animation, but nothing's happening. That is where keyframes come in. So we want to move this block, let's say we want to move it from here to there. What we do is we create a keyframe. We can do the same thing we do to add a frame, but replace it with keyframe, or we can press F6, which means it's telling at this point where the dot is, it moves. However, it doesn't know where it moves, so we have to tell it where to move. So we say, move there. And then we move to the animation, and we have created, kind of, our first animation. There we go. Now, you might be noticing it's not very smooth. And if you're inclined, you can add another keyframe in the middle. That creates the illusion of movement. And if we do it again, and again, that creates something pretty smooth. However, you're lazy, and you don't want to do that for every frame. So what's the solution? Well... Tweens. Tweens will cheat for you. They will make it so that it will make the computer figure out the movement for you. There's two types of tweens that really matter. There's classic and there's shape tweens. Shape tweens allow you to move any shape. You can do that. You can also make any change, any shape change into any shape. Let's say we want to make it a triangle. Let's say we want to make it a triangle that turns red. You can do that. You notice already that it's a bit glitchy. So I would not recommend using a shape tween unless you absolutely have to. So let's see what else we can do. Well, let's try a classic tween, right? That's the other type. Except error. The selected frame spans cannot be tweened. Thus, you must convert the frame content into a symbol. Now, what the heck is a symbol? Well, if we get rid of that keyframe, a symbol is when you convert a shape into a specific type of shape. So let's hit convert to symbol, right click, convert to symbol, or alternatively F8, we can name it, and we have to select the type of symbol. Now there's two main types that matter, movie clips and graphics. Now the difference between them is a little bit difficult to say, so I will simply say movie clips do not move on your timeline but they move when you render your video. Graphics move in your video, and they're a lot more versatile, but you can't apply fancy effects to them, which we'll go over later. So I would say in most cases, you want to use graphic. So let's turn it into a graphic, and now it is a symbol. Now this symbol can be duplicated over and over again. It can be copied and pasted, and if you change one symbol by double-clicking, which takes you into the symbol, you can see here. And if you want to change the color to red, that changes the color of all of them. And something very worth noting is you cannot change the points on your symbol unless you go into it. So it cannot change over time. So that makes it less flexible, but it also makes it so that it can be more reliable. You're, you're trading flexibility for reliability is essentially what you're doing. So let's say we want to have it move and rotate. Now that's not the most realistic motion. You can't really name anything that uh, that moves like that. When you move, you start off slow and you go off fast. That's or you you know, when something falls, it starts off slow and then comes to a screeching halt. So let's say we want to animate this as something that you throw and hits a wall, right? So, if you click on the tween, anywhere in the tween, in your properties panel, it'll give you the option for ease, effect, and rotate. Right now we're just going to focus on effect. Now effect changes the ease. And there's a couple built-in presets. There's ease in, which means it starts off slow and gets fast. Ease out, which means it starts off fast and gets slow. You can sort of see that in the curve it shows you. And ease in, ease out. Starts off slow, gets fast, and then ends slow. So let's say we want to make it so that it we're throwing it and it hits a wall. So we would do an ease in, there we go. See how, it, or maybe that's, you know, it, it, where you're pushing it, you're pushing this block over and it tumbles and it comes down with a mighty thud. Or let's say that you give it a really heavy push and it slows down. So, there you go. Ease in, ease out. In this case, this is just stone cube that moves of its own volition. 
in symbols, they can have some effects, namely color effects, where you can change the brightness of an object, its tint, so you can tint it to be another color, its alpha, and alpha is just a fancy word for transparency, and advanced, which allows you to do all kinds of nifty color effects. Like if you want to make it red, or if you want to make, you know, you can combine these. But this is how you can make it change color without doing shape tweens, by the way. So like, it turns from red to gray, which is the opposite of what we did earlier. Now the thing about a symbol, again, you can only, the only way you can change it is skewing it, changing the size, rotating it, and moving it. But you can also change its anchor point. Now this anchor point is something very fascinating. So with the anchor point here, we can rotate it and it always moves around this point, the anchor point. But if we move the anchor point to, so let's say this corner, and then it rotates around that corner. And you can do all sorts of neat tricks with that. Like say you wanna have something rotate around a point, just move the point there and weeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee